Welcome back. I'm your host, Michael DeFestus Plumley, and we're in the middle of a great game, 47 minutes in of the Korean Dota League Season 2, between two Tier 1 Korean teams, Ray and Pokerface. And the mid-game is definitely over. I like to call this third and final segment of the broadcast the late game. We see the conclusion of the game, and although I've focused a bit on learning and gleaning wisdom from the game earlier, who cares? Let's see how it turns out. When we left off, the middle racks had just fallen. And Rave, although they have been ahead most of the game, perhaps that is starting to erode. Enigma looking to farm up the jungle here. And with Lycan coming back online, his BKB down to only four seconds. Rave are looking to win at least one team fight. That's all they need. This top racks has been down for most of the game, I feel. But Rave had not been able to capitalize, losing several team fights, including two right at the foot of this tier three tower. Put all our heroes back online. They're moving together, with the exception of Lycan split pushing. He seems very quick to retreat out. And we see double siege creeps coming since it's past nearly the 50 minute mark. And with the smoke coming away, Pokerfish are looking to extend their consecutive teamfight lead as they push on this top tier 3 tower. Disruption going off on Slark defensively. Rubik should probably go steal a spell. Anytime. 
but instead the tier 3 tower falls. And we're seeing Slark port back to base, pick up both a Skullbacker and an Abyssal Blade. His DPS just increased extensively. Shadow Demon sticking around a bit too long in the forest as Rave doing an excellent job there. 4v1. Nonetheless, every kill is important. And they may use the 48 second Shadow Demon is down to push out this mid lane. Slark using this time to farm up a bit more, having just spent almost 7,000 gold on the Abyssal Blade. <clears throat> However, he has an excellent stun right now. Taking a quick look at the items. Gem out on Dazzle. And also worth noting is the Heavens Holberg on Dazzle as well. Going to be very good at cutting down the DPS of Lycan. Smoke coming out, it looks like Raver a little unsure of which way to go. Pokerface, sensing that all heroes are missing, are going to quickly retreat back to base. One of which even taking time to port. Instead they now see where the heroes are. At least Templar Assassin. They consume, can assume everyone else is in tow. Especially with the Vlad's oil being visible. And Raver in the base, they're looking to make a play. Perhaps on this tier 3 tower, it's down to 71 HP. Instead, Rave, retreat. They have not won a team fight in a very long time. And with Slark now having the Abyssal Blade online, it may only get worse. Boots of Travel coming out for Brewmaster are going to be very helpful since there might be a pivotal team fight that will require him to simultaneously port back to base and farm out these mega creeps. As J.O. continues to farm in mid, he's up to about 300 damage per hit. However, Slark, now tops on net worth, is quite beefy himself. He's scouting out the Roshan. Pausing a moment before picking up the haste room. And will they make a play on mid? He's going deep. He would like to split up the members of Rave and hopefully engage in a team fight with the rest of his team in tow. He does a quick circuit around the secret shop. And instead moves in with the rest of his team to claim Roshan. I'm not sure Rave are ready to move back into position here. They do have the ward to scout this. And instead, because of the rotation from the top lane and the Templar Assassin, they will abandon and put back to base. Radiance Rave only now. Is under attack. Coming into the Roshan pit. Middle tower Dazzle denying down. that tower was going to Radiance quickly be DPS down with multiple siege creeps coming in every wave that includes them. Middle and this is the fight. Roshan is low. Slark is here again. Brewmaster this time does snatch the Aegis. Shadow Demon quickly falling, but the weave is out on multiple heroes. J.O. he's falling. 3,000 HP. Who cares? The track falls as well, and Enigma dies without getting much done with his ult. Three heroes down for Pokerface. Pardon me, for Rave. And that was a disaster. Pokerface will presumably quickly look to push out this top lane. Quite a swell of creeps here. Double buybacks from both Enigma and Lycan. You can see Febby is all alone in first place with his net worth now. The top lane will fall. However, Templar Assassin is attempting to force out a base trade here. Pausing momentarily. Buyback from Shadow Demon may force him away. As another lane of racks looks like it will fall for Raid. 
They're still leading in the gold, but their lead has diminished to only 2,000. Templar Assassin pausing. I'm not sure if he can kill Shadow Demon. He's looking to pursue. J.O. is here as well. Will we have a base trade? There, members of Poker Face are moving to claim the top final racks. Whereas instead, Rave make the perilous decision to focus immediately on the Ancient. There's ports coming in. Chrissy has used his cheese. He does have MKB. J.O. disrupted. The tower's down to 2300. However, all lanes of racks have been claimed. And Lycan will go down. Chrissy, there's three members here, will claim her life as well. Instant buyback, but in all honesty, dropping down to third and fourth on the net worth chart, I'm not sure they can win another fight, especially with Mega Creeps. Now, on the field. That Ancient was down to 1300 HP, roughly about 25%, and it will slowly regenerate. Meanwhile, Brewmaster picking up another Heaven's Allbird. That's one on him, and I believe one on Dazzle. That will be very effective, as it has already at reducing the DPS of J.O. in these team fights. Templar Assassin has picked up the Talisman of Evasion, but she is a long way away from Butterfly with that recent buyback. And J.O.'s down for 50 seconds. Mega Creeps are out. And it looks like this game has slipped out of control for Rave. As both the XP and Gold have finally come back into Poker Face's favor for the first time in 45 minutes. Enigma, with only a BKB still after all this time. I'm not sure if he will be able to get the Miracle Black Hole. Especially with Slark having his own BKB and an Abyssal Blade ready. Really a good combination of disrupts and stuns from Poker Face. You have almost every member on the team able to nullify what could be potentially a game winning ult from Enigma. We have not seen it yet though. Poker Face are literally sitting in their base. I think they can feel that this game is very close within their grasp, though they will have to keep an eye out for some kind of backdoor shenanigans. Meanwhile, Rave are also in their base, but it's for an entirely different reason. The Mega Creeps keeping them pinned in their base, almost 300% HP, but reduced gold. They have been forced all the way back to their fountain. We have three members of Poker Face instead farming in the jungle briefly, pushing out the lanes a little further, though the Mega Creeks have already done that job for them. And now it seems like it's Poker Face's game to lose. The two supports of Dazzle and Shadow Demon standing watch over the Radiance Ancient. They have both sentry wards and extensive observer warding in the face. We may see a miracle smoke. We may simply see Lycan attempting to force his wolves in there. Slark rather brazen in the base of Wraith. He is all alone as well, with the majority of his members back home with the exception of Brewmaster. I'm a bit surprised Rave do not fight here. They have their best opportunity possible, if they will ever kill that slug. However, he is more or less six-slotted. Link Dagger, along with the Abyssal, the Sanji and Yasha, and the Eye of Scotty. More importantly, though, I feel his synergy of Shadow Dance, along with Dazzle Shallow Grave, have kept him alive in the majority of the team fights. Doom using this time to farm up a little extra. He might pick up an item for the final fight. And Rave looked to be lost. They felt this game so far in their grasp. But they're not sure how to pull it out. With nothing but the Ancient remaining, as well as the lane of Bottom Rex. 
one might wonder if they could have switched to this lane instead and forced double mega creeps from both sides. The game would look very different. However, that is not what happened. Instead, they went for the throat, and they may pay for it, ultimately. Hyperstone coming way of doom. Looks like he will look to get out a quick assault Curus, and perhaps that will signify the death push for Poker Face. Mask of Madness coming online for Templar Assassin, wanting to get at least one more item for the final fight. One of the two remaining towers being destroyed for the Radiant. And Rave are eternally stuck in their base. J.O., if anyone will, it will be him to try and manufacture a comeback. However, even Doom has farmed above him in the network now. It looks like he is ready to buy that assault here, space. And continuing to farm in the jungle, however. Slark roaming the map like he owns it, and he might as well at nearly 10,000 gold above the next member of Ray for the network. Once again, Febby using his ultimate to get a little bit of DPS on the tower. Not a bad choice. Will they be able to go on him? BKB says no, and will force him away. And instead it's Rave who are looking to hide behind their own ancient. I'm really amazed at the staying power by Pokerface being behind for much of the game. However, with every subsequent team fight, they've clawed back. Febby does so much damage. And also at 3,000 HP, it will be a miracle if they are able to kill him. Especially with the final tower, now falling. Is under attack. You see a mega melee creep roaming through the forest here. And there's a port. Lycan. Looking to get something done. However, Doom, Shadow Demon, and Brewmaster, along with Dazzle, are here in tow. And Slark doing work inside the rave base, pushing them practically back into their fountain as the mega creeps for long, but not for long. The GGs come out, the black hole does little, and a 62 minute game concludes. We saw almost a base trade coming the way for rave. They were down to roughly about 1200 HP. And I'd like to end the game by taking a quick moment to think back to the draft. We saw the Slark pick against J.O.'s Lycan being combated not only by the Dazzle, who gives extra survivability with the Shallow Grave, further extending Slark's ability to fight in the team fights, but furthermore, two Heaven's Halberd coming out late game for both Brewmaster and a Dazzle, cutting down greatly on Rave's DPS of their, really their only right-click hero. Could a Lashrak fifth pick have been better served with another carry and a switching of roles? That postulating is for another time. However, that was the end of the game. Thank you for watching. That was KDL Season 2 Korean Dota League, two Korean tier 1 teams. Rave falling after over an hour to Poker Face. I'm your host, Michael DeFessis Plumley. This has been an episode of 4D, Death's Daily Dose of Dota, and I'll see you soon. Until then.